Hey everyone, Kelly here, and today I'm going to answer the very burning question that's been on my mind and I'm sure has been on yours too, and that is, can we really get a really good set of Kalinsky Sable travel brushes for $24.99? Today we're going to find out, so stick around. Yes, now it's time for the review. Here's the case. It says it's leather. On the first one, it has the Fumi emblem. On the second one, it did not. Um, they seem identical other than that. They both feel and look like real leather. It says it's real leather. It doesn't smell like real leather. Um, the first set, um, this is the number 12, and you can see the cap is nice and tight. Um, and so is the number eight. They all three of them came to a really sharp point. Um, and this is how the new set came. The first one came the same way. They come in plastic. And um, I noticed that on my second set, the cap was not as snug and it was not real round either. Um, I think it's going to be okay, but it is a little bit loose and it's a little concerning to me about probably the, the quality control is maybe not quite so consistent. Um, now, the other thing I noticed that on my number eight, it did not come to quite as sharp a point. It ended up being okay, and you'll see that in the um, demonstration with the painting. And again, I'm, I'm concerned a little bit about the um, snugness of that cap. Um, but it is very nicely balanced, and I may have to add a little, I don't know, nail polish or something to just snug it up a little bit, but it I don't think it's going to be a big problem, but it is a concern if you're buying this set of brushes. Yeah, see the number eight. The number 12 came to a really nice sharp point. And I noticed that the consistency of the brush sizes and the lengths of the hairs was identical. And in both sets, the, uh, the bristles were very secure. And um, there, uh, there's a little bit of a, oh, they're splayed a little bit. I think it's because the brushes are, the hairs are real dry. So um, I cleaned them with my Generals. Um, it's a brush and cleaner and conditioner. And uh, it does a very nice job. And in fact, I wasn't very impressed with my first set. There were a lot of splayed hairs. Um, but I continued to use it and I just washed and conditioned them in the brush cleaner and boy they're they're really nice now and this is how I clean them I just get it nice and wet and then I rub it into the soap um, it's just to lather it it doesn't really lather but it gets a little bit of soft um, gushy stuff on it and I just work that into the bristles and um, clean it in the palm of my hand rinse it, get it nice and clean, and then I put a little bit of that conditioner in the brushes and just shape the brush, the, the bristles. Now while it's still damp, I'll go ahead and put the cap on it. The cap has a hole in it, and I get most of the moisture out of the brush, and then I will um, dry it on its side. And that's it. Now on to the painting. On this part, I'm mostly going to leave it at regular speed. I'm not gonna speed it up. Um, I'll cut out the boring parts where I'm shuffling around but I want you to see how long it takes to do stuff. One of the reasons Kolinsky Sable is so nice 
is because you don't have to go back and forth between your palette and it allows me to work a lot faster. I'm going to leave this at mostly real speed and just cut out the boring parts where I'm shuffling around or whatever. But um, one of the reasons I like the Kalinsky Sable is because it holds water. It's predictable in the way that it releases the fluid and it allows me to work a little faster. And it's more enjoyable because I'm not shuffling back and forth. Right here, I'm getting used to the way the brush, because this is the new brush, I'm kind of getting a feel for how it works. And I'm working a little bit more slowly and carefully. But what I noticed is that I'm able to get a really nice point and the fluid just comes right off the tip of the brush and I feel like I have a lot of control. You may be concerned about using animal hair in your brushes and your art products. Um, let me tell you what I found out. It may or may not reassure you or help you to make a choice. If you're vegan, your choice is already made. These brushes are not for you. But if you're not vegan and you're not completely opposed to using animal products, um, Kolinsky Sable comes from a male um, weasel that lives in Siberia and northern China and um, where it's very cold and during uh, the coldest months I guess they the hair gets very um, lush and long and um, the animals are, are trapped already and killed as I said um, because they're pests and the farmers don't want them on their land. And um, so during this time, the Kolinsky sables, uh, the uh, fur is harvested and used for the brushes. Now, um, it should reassure you, if you want to use Kolinsky sable, that uh, these animals are not dying for your brushes. They would be killed anyway. Um, it doesn't matter whether you buy the brushes or not, the animals will be killed. So if you uh, feel like you want to respect the animal in a certain way, where, uh, you know, whatever parts of the animal can be used as a resource, they get used. And otherwise, the animals die anyway, and uh, synthetic brushes have to be made. The reason I think that we can get these for $24.99 is that a significant portion of sable hair is harvested from China, and then it gets shipped to Europe, where the European makers produce the brushes. But um, these sable brushes are made in China. So probably the, the uh, bristles were harvested in China from Chinese sables. And then they were manufactured in China, which probably saves a lot of um, money as far as middlemen and all of that. So I chose to use um, a Kolinsky sable brush because of the price, honestly, for $24.99, I can't buy um, a versatile set, oh, a synthetic set. So a lot of it was cost for me as well. Um, I'm sure that you can get some synthetic brushes that perform almost as well anyway, uh, but I can't, I can't spend the money on that. I, uh, this is my second set of brushes. Um, you may know that I dropped, <laughs> I dropped the number four of my first set and it is 
no more. I looked everywhere. I can't find it. Maybe when I move out of this house in 20 years, I'll find it. But for now, it's gone. And that just highlights the whole point of not wanting to spend a fortune on a travel set of brushes. Because if I can lose one in the studio, I would even be more hesitant to take it out with me. Anyway, that's that's a whole nother debate. Right now, I just want to review the brushes and let you see how far I can go just with one trip to the palette. I'm going to speed up this next segment. It's one trip to the palette and you can see just how far I go painting these rings with just what's in my brush in one pass. Next I'm switching to the number 8 brush and I've sped this up a little bit too so it's not so tedious and you still get the idea. Um, I can go a, halfway around this mandala on this little piece with just one trip to the palette. And I'm still able to keep a very nice point. I was concerned about this brush because it didn't come to quite as sharp of a point as the other two brushes. But as you see, um, I can still get right into those tiny little corners and I'm still able to stay within um, the lines and keep a very precise painting section. Now I'm able to paint the background behind the gold rings with that number eight brush which holds a lot of pigment, a lot of fluid. I do have to go back a little more often than when I'm just painting smaller sections, but I don't have to go back as frequently. And um, the reason I prefer not to do that, you can see, even if you have the same mixture in your palette, it still gets more and more concentrated because the fluid evaporates and the pigment doesn't. So uh, the fewer times you have to go back and forth to the palette, the more even you can keep things. At least that's been my experience and that's at my skill level. I found it to be a really enjoyable, relaxing experience, not at all stressful. Um, and this is a small mandala. It's not a big one. I was able to do it in one evening. When I've used different brushes, it's taken a lot longer. And I really do believe that being able to hold and release the um, liquid consistently and predictably is key for being able to do that. It occurred to me after I finished this that I never did show you the number 12 brush and I can't believe I didn't do that but um, I guess what I would say is if you work bigger or you're covering a lot of ground I think you're going to be able to control uh, that brush you're going to it comes to such a nice point I just don't need that much fluid for what I do still and this points to the value of the set that even if I only use the two smaller brushes it's still worth $25 to me. I think it's a really good brush set. I do think that for $25 the quality control on the fit and finish is not going to be up to the standard of the name brand higher priced products. So if that's important to you, this may not be the brush set for you. On the other hand, you could do uh, Amazon Roulette and order it and see what happens. You can always send them back. Um, it's not coming directly from China. 
I think it's fulfilled out of Amazon and I was able to get mine with the two like I think it's two-day free shipping with your Amazon Prime membership anyway I think they're a great set of brushes I wouldn't hesitate to recommend them uh, for the price if you're not vegan so if you're okay with using animal products and you need a good travel set I think this is a pretty good winner two for two I would say the performance and the price has been exactly what I would expect and more so anyway I hope you have a fabulous day enjoy painting or doing whatever artistic endeavor you're into doing and um, enjoy your summer thanks a lot and hey don't forget to subscribe and like and please comment if you have anything to add. Um, I would love to have you add it to the comments. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.